just started a couple of days ago, and here we are already by his mercies in the second quarter of this year. So before we even begin to raise up any other petitions or anything else, let's just take a few minutes to say thank you, Lord. Let's just say thank you, Lord. Many people started the year, they are not here. Many people started the year in one way, things have taken a very drastic turn in their lives for the worse. But we're here today by his grace. We're here today by his mercies. We, help, we go out, we come in. His mercies have kept us throughout the year from January to February to March. And now we get to see the second quarter of this year. So let's just open our mouth and give thanks. Let's just open our mouth and give praises. Let's just open our mouth and exalt his name. Let's just open our mouth and do that for a few minutes. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this month and we thank you, Father, for the blessings of the new quarter. Lord, we give all the glory and adoration to your name. We worship you, O God. We thank you because it is by your mercies that we are not consumed. We give all the glory to you, Lord. We, walk, we, we thank you, Jesus. We welcome you in our midst even this morning, even as we give thanks to you. We say, be glorified, be exalted, O God. Oh, misa nobre anselian de shan de la bateria. Legatora manda saparan de balacando. Lora banda sende regasula. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Rabas donde baroma cambe legetenia. Raba condo breke maza santa lima cande legeme. Lord, we worship you. Maso se brecava miligaso zanda breande sacaniando. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we have come back to say thank you. We have come back to say thank you. We know how much of your mercies we have enjoyed. We know how much of your goodness we have enjoyed. We just want to say thank you. Many of us started the year one way, and Lord God, we can testify of great things on many sides. Lord, we just say thank you for the gift of health, for the gift of life. Lord, thank for the you. gift of our family, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, because we have not had any thank reason to sorrow Lord. over any one member of our family, Lord, we just say thank you. Father, because thank you have, you, you have destroyed you. every plan of the enemy that was raised against us, we just say thank you. We say thank you, we say thank you. Because every thank dart you. that the enemy sent in our direction, you intercepted every single one of them. We just say thank you, Lord. Maso parada fenega barida sasila. Raba baba kada zakatele ke pananza sira bona satia ne o reba deli mande shan de brada da kisaria di falia da sindo kavanima arima na kateli barakunda shatana sana kalia dos kambe liske sande o raba kambre de gete. Please, ladies, let's try and come off mute and just open our mouth and give thanks. We we know the culture here. We we try to come off mute and raise our voices together as one. Maso kalibara tavane se kande rabakande o na lori abasu se brekete Lord we thank you. We bless your name. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah rabasu na barakita ne na bariba sinando le brata vanda kanda janda kanda yanda sade kato mari bagis kalita brakate. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Hallelujah. Thank you for your protection. Back this year. Lord God, we have taken trips and we have come back home safely. We just want to say thank you. Masopra de Cabelinanda Sigatalia, Obrege Balacamba Zegetelia, Mokora Balacanda Braca de Gete, Esima Candesinia, Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to continue to give thanks. In Psalm 34, and from verse 1 and 2, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. You know what I like is the verse 1 where it says, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Because if it was left for the enemy, that would not be our story. It would be that, you know, our mouths are filled with crying. It would be that our mouths are filled with complaining. It would be that our mouths are filled with anything else but praise. But the psalmist is saying here, he's making that declaration. He's saying, my mouth shall, his, his prayer shall continually, shall continually be in, in my mouth. 
So let us just open our mouth and bless the Lord because this is this is the, the posture we have to have that at all times, at all times we are blessing the Lord. Let us just open our mouths one more time and say thank you and bless his name and give praise to his name. Thank <laughs> Rabba baba baba dekete ora mesege brekete ora mesege brekete mesala barayanda sada barayanda sikalidanto ido makari baskila virimante sete dekete O Lord we bless your name maso se brekete araba baba dogote araba sade brekete O Father for we have had cause to praise you through the year and even now we are still praising you we are still praising you we just say glory to your name glory to your name Hallelujah Hallelujah, most high God. Meso karada mese prane adini kala manse seria o mikali amirate mana kato sanda ame ni me kaza zogota. If it were not for your goodness, if it were not for your mercy, where would we be? Lord, we just want to say thank you. Meke prata mo kazo vari manse yande sakata kato e mara bata bara kata kote e riba sila kona nige chenia o me na shaya da kabara kaze sene do. When we did when we did the prayers in January, when we did this 21 days of prayers, one of the things that we we um had prayed about, one of the things that we had mentioned. Um, was you know the sound when when um, we said a thousand shall fall by our left, ten thousand by our right, but it shall not come nigh us. Now I don't know about you, and I don't know what your year has looked like. Mm, thank you, Jesus. But I know for a fact that this is literally my testimony, and eventually at some point I will get to share it like in in more detail. But indeed, the Lord is faithful to His word. When we gather and we pray, when we gather and we make these declarations, we are not saying it to fulfill righteousness. We're not saying it because it was written somewhere and it's like we have to repeat it because we need to fill up the time. No, we're saying it because it is the promise of God to us and we get to lay hold of it and we get to decree it over our lives and we get to see it fulfilled that come to pass. A thousand shall fall by our left and 10,000 by our right, but it will not come near us. Many things have happened. Many disasters have happened in different countries here in the U.S., in Nigeria. So many places things have happened. But the word of the Lord has stood sure for us that a thousand shall fall by our left, a ten thousand by our right, but it will not come near us. So verse 3 of Psalm 34, it says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is me inviting you. Because I don't know, maybe, you know, it hasn't quite been your story, right? But I know of, of a truth that we here in, in King's Arrow can say that that word of God has been true for us. So according to the word of, uh, in, in Psalm 34, verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us just do that for one more minute before we go into anything else. Let us raise our voices. Let us exalt his name together for one minute. Just give him pure praise from your heart, pure praise from your heart for keeping you, for keeping you. You've heard so much news about things going on in so many places and so many people's lives, but he has kept you. So let's open our mouth and give him pure praise. Lebaros Mahavari Masalia Nerekavasia Rakiva Sinande Sala Kumara da Santi Rakabela Maraka Zubara de Mene Kalia de Sini Braka Bono Betemando Kashma Sarakivia Rada da la Baramanda Senge Thank you, Jesus. Maso Rabade Kaza Sanaya, for you have not allowed the enemy to exert upon any one of us here. We just thank you, Lord. 
Barabida Filika Brante Bene Cabri Amasudia Kalimo Aluma Babosh Mahanda Braca Degete Ala Mayaga Pala Dega Mazakiri Kaluria Mososo Keke Preke Kebasi Zama Yabakaya Bene Kete Ula Kaja Mandi Rifete Braca Boko Sene Banakilia Sozane Oh no you have kept us you have kept us from the that we have not and still been captain around but it has not come near us we say thank you Lord we are not better than those who have been impacted we are not more worthy than we are but your mercy your mercy oh God I am the way, I am the name, but it's in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. In Jesus name. In we pray. Amen. 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 Friends, you know, we don't typically have the time to take testimonies, um, but, you know, I think it's only right that I do do that. Um, without taking too much time and going into too much details, I can say of the truth that the times that we've gathered here to pray and decrease certain things have indeed been a blessing to me. I don't know what it's been like for you. It is my prayer that you have the same testimony. I know the things that I have observed. I know the things that I have seen in the past few months, but my testimony is that God has been good. The things that we have stood here together as sisters and agreed upon, God has ensured that that word didn't fall to the ground in my own life. And I'm coming back to give him thanks in the midst of everyone because we all pray these prayers together. So it is my prayer that every person can say and point at something, something each month and say, truly, God kept me. God did this. God did that. Maybe at some point we'll find some time to properly gather, you know, some of the testimonies to encourage others. Because when we gather like this and we pray and we pray and we don't get to hear from each other, if things are not happening in one person's life the way, life the way that they expect, it, it, you know, they might start to wonder, is God even hearing me? Is God even hearing us? But when we hear these testimonies from each other, it's a reminder that God is hearing us. Because if that person was here and we made those prayers together and they are testifying, then of a truth, God was here. And I don't, I, I know, you know, some of us have heard the saying where, where we are, when we worship, that when we can see God blessing our neighbor, when we see God doing things in the lives of people around us, it's not, a, and, and maybe even if we don't yet see what he's doing in our own lives, it's not a reason to despair, it's not a reason to cry. It's rather a reason to rejoice because it simply means that God is in the neighborhood. If I see the mailman delivering my neighbor's mail, if I see him, you know, driving down my street, even if I haven't yet received my package, it's reason for me to rejoice because I know he's in the area. So it is only a matter of time before my own package is delivered. So I want to thank God for the things that he's doing in the lives of people because, you know, I've had the testimonies that some people have shared with me privately. And I've had my own testimonies that lets me know that God indeed is here in our midst. He hears us. He cares about the things that we bring before him. So when I was saying, let's give thanks to him this morning, it's not just because, right, you know, it's the beginning of a new month, or a new quarter. Let's give thanks it's because of the truth. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. So it is my, my prayer that even as we proceed, as we progress with these prayers, every single person will have that cause to testify. So please don't be quiet about the things that God is doing in your life. It's going to encourage someone else. If you want to share it with the house, that's fine. You can reach out. We've made time for it. If you want to share privately because, you know, it's personal and you want to stay anonymous, you can do that as well. But please, let's just, you know, take that time to acknowledge the goodness of God. So this is me coming back in your midst to say yes of a truth. I have passed through, you know, things this year. But the word of the Lord, that word. A thousand shall fall by my left, 10,000 by my right, but it shall not come near me. That has been my testimony. And I give all the glory back to God. So thank you all again for joining this morning. Um, we're going to take a few prayer points um, before we wrap up today. As I prepared for this morning and I was seeking what the Spirit of God was saying, um, a word came to me and that's you know where we're going to be taking our prayers from. And that word was tenacity. 
tenacity, we know the meaning of that word. It's just the attribute of being determined. It's the attitude of just, just staying, staying, staying. That's really what tenacity is at the end of the day. It's persistence, perseverance, tenacity, that ability to stay grounded, to stay put. That is what it is at the end of the day. And I wondered why that was what the Holy Spirit highlighted. And then it made sense, you know, eventually as I continue to ask questions. When I taught earlier, or not earlier, because it's a new month already, when I taught last month on the grace for access, the one thing I had mentioned as I tied off all of the teachings was the fact that many times we don't have, you know, what we should. We don't see the effects or the benefits of that grace for access in, in our lives because of the one thing that we don't do, which is knocking. And I mentioned knocking as that, that ability to, to press for something, knowing that God has made things available and pressing for it, pressing being willing to, to exert yourself to see that thing come to pass. And so this morning, we're going to be looking at a few things just in the way of tenacity because that is the word of the Spirit for somebody here today because there are things that you have been praying about. There are things that you have been trusting for. It hasn't yet come to pass. Maybe God has given you a little you know, piece of comfort here and there just to keep you going, but... The word of the Lord for you today is tenacity, being determined, staying there. First Kings chapter 18. Let's take a look at that from verse 30, from verse 42 to uh, 43. You don't have to put it on the screen, Ola. I just want to mention this. So this is the story of Elijah when he was praying to God. Because many times, like I said, that knocking element, that is what we do, you know, we, we don't get right. Sometimes some of us are so gentle so gentle so soft just like do a light tap and then we we go back like oh i don't want to make a noise i don't want to be a bother but from verse 40 verse 42 here in first kings and and uh chapter 18 it says he yes, says so ahab went up to eat and to drink this was elijah who actually asked him to eat and drink actually let's start from 41 it says and elijah said unto ahab get thee up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain that is a beautiful promise. If somebody tells you there is a sound of abundance of rain, it's a beautiful promise to hold on to. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down on the, on the, upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he, Elijah said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time. That he said, behold, there ariseth a cloud, a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down. Friends, I want to say this to you again. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Tenacity. Tenacity. This is Elijah making these prayers. He had already given a word. He said, there's going to be an abundance of rain. And he sends his servant up there to go look. The servant looks up there and he sees nothing. And, and Elijah gives the instruction. He says, go back. Go back there. Go back there. So this is the word that I'm sharing with you all today. I don't know what you've been praying about. I don't know what you've been trusting about. I don't know what you've been believing on God for. But the word of the Lord to you today is stay put. Keep pressing. Tenacity. So we're going to open our mouth this morning because it takes that element of faith. It takes the element of, of courage. It takes that, 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 that grace from God to stay on it because it didn't show up in the second time. It, it said it was at the seventh time that that little, little cloud showed up and he was able to hold on to that. So we're going to open our mouth this morning and we're going to ask God for this grace. Even as it was with Elijah that he could stay, stay on that prayer till he saw what he was asking for. We're going to ask God for that grace to be tenacious in our approach, tenacious in our desires, tenacious in our requests, the prayers that we're making. Let us just open our mouth and ask God for that grace for a few minutes this morning. 
Sobarima sila bariande shada baraka mondo seke bramatila zada komba rada sande vera kami liga bariando zeke teke braka dege baso zami rabakinda liga tariando raba base kabele mande shabra dakato Lord Jesus we ask you this morning for the grace we ask you Lord for the grace we ask you Lord for the grace we ask you Lord for the grace many of us have believed many of us have believed we have trusted for certain things. January has come, February, March, and now we are in April. Father, we are asking you for the grace to not be tired. We are asking you for the grace to not get tired, but to stay there, but to stay there, to stay there until we see that which we have believed for. Maso rabakalia manze fete gomeria zosila riba ba sekete nera kope na masira baravakatane reba bete mende shabra data mono sanga barira kalimastiando nenda be Telemando Sabra da Kata Belegazo Amen. Amen. We're going to take the next prayer. But before we do that, I want to just share a couple of things. It's from Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to, I think, about 3. That's probably where we'll, we'll peg it. Um, it's actually Daniel chapter 9. So it says here, it says, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahas- Ahasuerus, if that's pronounced properly, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the child, Chaldeans and Chaldeans in the first year, please take note from verse two, it says, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord, my God. I want to peg it there because the rest of it is just the prayers that he made. But I want to point this out because this is something that the Holy Spirit has been just brewing with me. And I I realized it wasn't just something for me to, to be aware of. And here's the thing. What we're seeing here in Daniel chapter 9 is the fact that God had set certain things in motion, okay? A timeline, a time span had been given for the actualization of certain things. And we're seeing here that Daniel understood by books. So what he was saying essentially was this, and if we're familiar with what was happening at that time, the children of Israel had been carried away into captivity. God mandated it because of their behavior, because of their sins and all of that. And he had set a timeline because he didn't intend for them to be in captivity forever. So he had set a firm timeline for that. And so Daniel is saying here that he, by books, that is, he went to study and he was looking at what the other prophets behind him had written. And he saw that Jeremiah had captured it in the books, the time span for which um, the children of Israel were supposed to be in that captivity. And so based on that, it was now time for them to be released. So here's what I want to point out to you. Did God not know that it was time for them to be released? He did. But it takes a watcher. It takes someone with, with insight. It takes someone who's watching. It took Daniel to go look and see. Have we satisfied the time span of this punishment? Have we satisfied the timeline of this captivity? 
here's what I want to point out to you today, right? Because this is something that I've seen God do multiple times. There are times when we are praying for certain things or we want some things to happen. But the way God has built this world is that things are typically trapped and tied to seasons. God has planted certain things in certain seasons. And until that season comes, they don't come to pass. They don't show up. So God has set a firm time span and said, it's going to be this number of years that you all are going to be here in captivity. And after that, you'll be released. So it means that if anybody was making prayers during that time, you were more so seeking God for like, oh God, please help. Oh God, make this season bearable. That's really what your prayers could have been at that time. So it's important that we understand how we're praying so that we're not praying the wrong prayers. At that time, prior to that time, there are prayers would have been more aligned if they were praying for the grace to to go through that season, to tolerate that captivity, to tolerate the situations. However, when the time span that God puts around a certain matter expires, it requires somebody who's watching, somebody who, who, who understands based on studying the pattern of the spirit, based on dealing with, with the spirit of God, dealing with you know, knowledge, insight, revelation from the spirit of God to bring to pass that thing that has been hanging. So this is what Daniel was doing here, that it was now time, the time was up and it required somebody who would stand and make that demand and say, God, based on what you said, this time span, this window has now elapsed. It is now the season for this other thing to happen. This is what the Holy Spirit has um, dealt with me on in the last few weeks. And I know now that when these things happen like that, it's not just because of me. It's because of everyone who's tied to what we do together on this platform. So what I'm telling some people here today is that some things that you have been waiting on God for, the reason that you didn't see what you expected is because they were still within the window that God allowed them to persist. So what I'm telling you now is that you need to take your posture like Daniel. It is not the time to back down because what happens is this, when we don't have insight into the, the way that God is handling things, we then end up spending all of our energy praying in a window, praying for God to stop something in a window where our prayers should have been more of grace to pass through that season. And so, because we do that and do that, we then get tired. And so when we get to the end of that season, where our prayer should not be, Lord, thank you. I've, I've completed the cycle. Now it's time for this thing to, to, to be you know, brought to pass, even according to your word. We're tired. We're gassed out. So the word of the Lord to somebody today is this. Do not gas. This is the time. If ever there was a time for you to have the energy to pray, it's now. Because you have completed a cycle. Whether you were aware of that cycle you were in or not, you have completed that cycle. You have completed that season. And it is now time, even like Daniel, to take up your post and call for that thing which belongs to you. I hope somebody is understanding what I'm saying here. It's like if somebody is pregnant and you're supposed to do the nine months of the gestation period and you now start crying in the third month, it's don't, it's not, that's not the time for it. It's not going to happen. All that's going to happen is God is going to give you the grace to go through the morning sickness, to go through the tiredness, to go through the swollen feet, to go through all of that. But when you reach the ninth month, your prayer is different from what you're praying in third month, in fourth month, in seventh month, or even in the eighth month. Now your prayer is, Lord, the time has come and this baby should come out healthy. I hope somebody is understanding what I'm trying to say here. This is the word of the Lord for someone on this floor. I don't know what cycle you have been in. I don't know what thing you have been praying for and waiting on God for and trusting for. But I'm telling you now, because it's what the spirit of the Lord has been drumming to me in the last month, that somebody has reached the end of that gestation period. Somebody has reached the end of that waiting season. Somebody has reached the end of that holding pattern. And it is now time to take your place like Daniel and call for this thing. In verse three, it says, and I set my face upon the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So everything that you have done, done here that too, all well and good, great. But now is the time to mount your post. 
and call for this thing. So whatever that is for you, whoever that person is, I don't know who it is. I don't even know how many people that they are. We're going to open our mouth and like Daniel, call for it. Call for it in your understanding or call for it in your spirit. But this is the word of the Lord to you. You have finished your gestation window. It is now time. If Daniel didn't stand up and begin to cry for this thing, they would have continued to be there. So now we know better because the spirit of the Lord has quickened our spirit and given us understanding. So let us open our mouths and pray. Now we're asking for specific things, things that we have been waiting on. God is saying, you have rounded your curve. You have finished that window of waiting. You have finished that season. So now begin to call on God. See the posture of Daniel saying, God, now is the set time. That is a, that is a prayer. Now is the set time to favor me, God. Show up for me even in this season. Show up for me now. Let's open our mouths and pray. No question Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, right now for the grace of anointing somebody on the call right now. Breaking that cycle, breaking that cycle, breaking that cycle, that which is like whatever that is over your mouth. Everybody keep praying. Keep praying. I'm still on the other side of the field. Yokosaya na ma 
as we prayed, I could feel the Lord anointing somebody to break that yoke, to break that cycle of waiting, that cycle of delay, to indeed release you into that season. So whoever it is, I agree with you in faith. I say the end has come to that delay. The end has come to that waiting. Now is the set time that you receive the favor of the Lord in that thing that you have been trusting God for. And it shall begin to be manifested in your life. The thing that God has promised, the thing that you have waited on God for. Mm. I feel the presence of God strongly this morning. Strongly this morning. Yes, yes, yes. There's someone else on the call. You're also getting anointed right now. There is a heat that is stirring up in your body and it's actually going to address things that have tarried in you. Things that have tarried in you that you have waited on God for. Whoever that person is, I release I release the power of God over you to address the situation, to address the matter in the name of Jesus. As you step away from the altar this month, that matter comes to an end. That situation comes to an end in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In verse 21 of that same chapter actually from verse 20 it says it says and whilst i was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people and presenting my supplication before the lord my god the holy mountain of my god yea while i was speaking in prayer even the man gabriel whom i had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the even oblation and he informed me and talked with me and said oh daniel i am now come forth to give this skill and understanding there are some of us here who this is exactly what is going to happen to us we're going to receive a visitation from god to confirm that indeed this is the set time and so whatever that visit needs to bring whether it's a word of confirmation whether it's insight whether it's strategy whatsoever it may be we're going to now ask god to help us to receive with clarity, to receive that from him, because there's no point if Daniel would have spent all that time praying, making supplication, and when the time came for Gabriel to come and give him the insight that he needed, then he couldn't pick it, then he couldn't sense it, then he couldn't hear it, and then it would almost be like it didn't even matter and God didn't even hear him. So we're gonna be asking God now for that grace that Lord, However, you need to communicate with me, Father, help me stay open, help me be open, help me perceive, heighten my spiritual sensitivity, heighten my spiritual awareness, open my ears, open my eyes that I may receive that which you are releasing, even in this season. Because for some of us, it's an instruction that will precede the manifestation. For some of us, that's what it is. It's a clear instruction. For some of us, it's that God will explain some things differently to us, better to us, and then we can take our actions from there. So we're going to ask God for the grace to receive clearly, clearly, even as he begins to dole out that instruction to help us understand how to, how to make our move into this new season he's opened up for us. So let's just open our mouth and ask God for that this morning. Thank you. 
Whatever it is that we desire to do, however it is, O oh Lord, Father in heaven, I pray that you may heighten my sensitivity to Jehovah Lord. The King of glory, I will be aware of Jehovah Lord. I shall hear you, I shall see Jehovah King. Father in heaven, King of glory, I shall be sensitive to it, O oh Lord, that I will be able, Father in heaven, to pray in line with you in the name of Jesus. That Lord, I shall be in the Father in heaven. If you will, in the name of Jesus, in this new month, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This is the last prayer point we're going to take before we close this morning, and it's in First Kings chapter eight and verse, um, verse fifteen. It says here, and this is Solomon, right? This is um you know, the, the prayers that he was making to God, you know, after he had built um, the house of the Lord, he said, and he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David, my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it. This is something that is very important that many of us are not aware of. Some of the things that we are even wanting to see, these are things that God has actually promised in our family. He promised a parent. He promised someone. He has already released that blessing. But for whatever reason or another, it wasn't supposed to be actualized in, in their time. Now, imagine a situation where God had released this blessing. He had already given this word concerning Solomon. But Solomon never knew. Because many of us, that's the situation. There are things, I, well, we've made this prayer before, but I want us to make this prayer again because it's very important. Some of our families are, 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 are not enjoying certain things that have been already given to us. Why? Because the promise was made in a certain generation and it was not communicated downward. And so these things, they are like, it's like when you have something in a safety deposit in a bank somewhere, but it was never communicated to a child. So now there's this safety deposit somewhere in a bank that has millions, that has gold, all of that. But it was never communicated to the child in that family. So they don't actually get to use it. So at some point, the bank has to get rid of that stuff. So this last prayer, like I said, some of us are in a season for actualization. So while for some of the things that we're, we're talking about is that that particular season has only just come and we're stepping into it, for some other people is that it has been hanging in your family, but there was nobody to actually go claim it. Nobody was able to go into that bank that I just used as an example to go fill out the forms and sign, show proof, show documents and say, yes, I'm the, you know, I'm the child of this person. And so I qualified to, to, to get the contents of this deposit out. So this is Solomon thanking God. It says, blessed be the Lord God, which spake with his mouth unto David, my father, and had uh, this his hand fulfilled it. So we're going to be asking finally, before we close this morning, we are going to be making this declaration that every promise, everything that accrues to our family, because God definitely leaves things in families. There are blessings he puts over families. So everything that he promised unto our father, our mother, whoever it is in our family that is yet to be actualized, we are asking for it. We are asking for it. That even as Solomon said, that the word of God should be fulfilled in our families. 
some of us, God had already released the grace for somebody to, to be a financial giant. God had already released a promise that, you know, such and such in this family, you know, there will be a financial giant. In this family, somebody will build this. In this family, somebody will do that. But it was a promise that was given to a parent to be actualized in a different generation. So we're going to ask God that everything that ha has been promised in our family that is yet to be fulfilled, we are standing in the line to make that collection. We are standing to fill out the form. We are standing to lay hold of it. Let's just make that prayer very quickly. And I trust that God will begin to release things, those things that have been tied up in the heavens that have already been granted to our family, but nobody was able to come and collect it. We are collecting it now by faith in the name of Jesus. Let's just make that petition. Maso Cabera de Finalia Sisani, Rabacuna Basan, the Luca Brabunda Shada, and the Raboca Brabunda, God, what belongs to my God, what belongs to my God, the promises of God, we ask that the promises that you have made to our family, the promises that you made to our fathers, the promises that you made to our mothers, Lord God, we are strong, and they be released to us this morning, and we ask that they be released to our family. We stand as a representative. Of our family to make that collection, to make that collection on behalf of our family. Father, we ask that this thing be actualized even in our time, in our generation, in the name of Jesus. We ask that the blessings that have been trapped in the heavens, Lord, we stand in the place of collection today to lay hold of this thing. Lord, we stand in the place of collection that these things be released upon our families. All the families that have been in the past have been released, that there will be financial giants, that there will be. What that my God will deliver all that family. The Father in heaven was in the will that was to be passed on to the great grant of Kamiyanda. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. He was to be the God in the name of God. So Sayana Maziki Sweet, Yoko Sayana Maziki Sweet, Yoko Sayana Mama Mama, Yoko Laraba Ziki Sayana Mozo, Yoko Sayana Baba Baba, Yoko Laraba Baba Baba, Yoko Sayana Maziki Little Boy, Yoko Sayana Mazi, Yoko Laraba Baba Baba, it's okay, we see the name for this name. Amen, amen, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another opportunity to gather before you. It is a new month. It is a new quarter. And we're full of praise for you. We're full of gratitude. We just say thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask and we pray that even as we have stood together this morning, I have released the word that you put in my heart for your people. Lord Jesus, every single person who has tarried, who has waited, and whose gestation cycle is completed and that now is the time for the release. Now is the time for the manifestation. Lord, I ask for a speedy delivery of these things in their lives in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not just the delivery of these things. I thank you for the delivery. But Lord God, I'm asking for a speedy delivery of these things. And I speak from that place that of what you have done, even that I have seen. Yes, let there be a speedy delivery. Let there be a speedy delivery. I use that word very deliberately, a speedy delivery. Even as I have seen you do in my life, Lord God, I ask for a speedy delivery of these things for everyone whose season has come in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you grant everyone whose season has come the grace to actually stay, the grace to stay planted, the grace for tenacity to make that demand, to stay there, to wait until we receive it. Even like Elijah, 
who continued to check, who continued to check until he saw that which he was praying for. Lord, we ask for that grace because we know that this is the set time. This is the set time. And we thank you because even as we look to you, we will not be ashamed, oh God. Lord, I ask for everyone here whose families have been marked for certain blessings, whose family has been marked for certain exploits, whose families have been marked for certain, certain realities that are yet to be seen. Lord, I ask that there be a release from the heavens. I ask that there be a release from the heavens, even as they have stood today in the gap for their family to lay hold, to make that collection. I ask that there be a release. I ask that there be a release in the name of Jesus. And even as we depart from here today, I ask that you begin, thank you, Jesus. Somebody on this call, your ears are being opened. Your ears in the spirit are being opened. So you will actually hear what that instruction is. You will hear what you need to do. You will hear what you need to do. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that as we depart today, that you open our ears, that you open our eyes. Mm. Somebody's ears are being opened in the name of Jesus. Father, as many people who need their spiritual ears to be opened, because this is usually where people get stuck where you've already released something, but we are not able to perceive it. As many people today as need their spiritual ears to be open, Lord, I ask that you touch their ear even right now in the name of Jesus and cause their ear to be open to hear the instruction, to hear the word from you, to hear the insight from you that will lead them into the actualization of these promises in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. We God meet bless again you, tomorrow. Oh, and even today we meet for the Bible study. So please, let's all show up for the Bible study. And then we meet tomorrow again for the second day of prayers. God bless everyone and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Bye.